Hi, this is Stu Miniman with Wikibon.org. Here we're SiliconANGLE TV's live continuous coverage from VMworld 2012 here in Moscone North, the hang space, day three. Some of us are uh, getting a little raspy in the voice from the long conversations we've had, and uh, pleased to be uh, joining you for the networking panel. Uh, so uh, networking is a, is a huge discussion here. Uh, you know, if you talk about you know the Nicira acquisition that just happened, uh, uh, the networking stack is a piece of the virtualization environment that everyone is focusing on. You know, storage gets a lot of play for, for, from us here, of course, as well as everybody there. But uh, I think for the last year or so, everybody's saying that the next big you know, innovation and changes in the marketplace are happening in the networking side. And, and as I said, pleased to have a nice distinguished panel to help walk through some of those changes. So uh, uh, joining me here, I'll, I'll walk through, is Howie Zhu from Big Switch, Greg Shearer from Broadcom, and Haseeb uh, Badani uh, from Infinetta. So sorry about that, Haseeb. So uh, guys, w welcome on theCUBE. Um, Greg, you've been on before, but the other guys, you know, try to bring to our community kind of the, the you know, latest changes, the disruptions in the marketplace, help extract the signal from the noise. Um, you know, last year, you know, networking was a big part. I mean, remember, right at VMworld, you know, VXLAN and NVGRE was, you know, the, the big discussion point. And here again, you know, with the NICERA acquisition and software-defined data center is going. So, you know, Howie, um, you know, I th think the networking folks are going to know who you are, but can you give us a little bit of your background and start us off with you know, what you see as the kind of software-defined data center and network. So get, give us a minute or two on, on that. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve, for inviting Stu, me to, actually. Stu, sorry, for <laughs> inviting right. me, uh, to this uh, place. We're, this we're is my good. first time. That's why I'm a little bit nervous. But um, I'm the VP Engineering at Big Switch. Prior to Big Switch, I was at VMware for almost a decade. Um, and uh, running the entire networking strategy, vision, and engineering execution. I have been associated with server virtualization revolution from day one, and uh, now with SDN journey from day one. It's such a blessing for me. And uh, a lot of things VMware innovated and then uh, revolutionized over the last decade. It exposed a number of issues, and uh, that's where SD, why SDN gets more important, because there are more and more boxes. There are more and more silos. And uh, it's, VMware made a server-side provisioning management so flexible, automated so much things. It exposed the slowness on the networking side. I often call the server side, it's the machine speed, and the networking side is the human speed. Now, there's such a disparity, it creates this opportunity for SDN to catch up. So that's why I'm excited um, on this SDN. Okay, great, L lots we're gonna get, get into. So, so, so Greg, when you talk about software really being a critical mm -hmm. component. And the networking side, you know, most of us uh, that, that look at this say merchant silicon is, is a real important piece of this. And of course Broadcom, you know, supplies both the, the server side and, and the switch side chipset that, that many of the players, that mo you know, uh, uh, the majority of the players use. Um, you guys made an announcement this week. C can you just give us kind of an intro about kind of what you're doing in the space and kind of, you know, what's, what's the dynamic in networking of hardware versus software? You bet. So we're, we're very excited. So we, we did, as, as you mentioned, our, our announcement. We made a couple of announcements, but uh, we announced our Triton 2 switch. So it's a little like, you know, we, we've been pregnant with Triton 2 for quite a while, and so it's wonderful to actually bring it to market and be able to talk about it openly. But it's, it's the, the first uh, device that has over 110 gig ports in a single piece of silicon. Um, it also supports a, a very rich set of SDN manageable features you know, to be able to export that control plane, be managed through, you know, other uh, frameworks. In addition to that, we also have a lot of offloads. So NVGRE and VXLAN are built into the silicon now, as opposed to, to just having to have specialized gateways. Literally all of our XGS line moving forward will support this capability. So it, we're, we're very excited about that. Okay. Inside the server, from a host perspective, we also have announced uh, network virtualization acceleration from the standpoint of being able to take NVGRE and accelerate uh, large send offload, large receive offload, um, but at a UDP basis, since uh, NVGRE is really uh, L2 over UDP. So, so, so great, so we're, taking we're a lot of the excited. protocols, baking it into the hardware, making we, it kind of transparent across all product lines. You know, in the host, the control plane belongs in the host, but hardware does what hardware does best, and that's accelerate you know, that, that data plane, and we're very excited about that, but that's where we need the rest of the ecosystem and our partners to be able to 
uh, you know, how he talked about the incredible volume of, of VMs and traffic that's going up, that management it really needs partners to be able to manage the scale that's just unprecedented. Okay, so uh, uh, see, when I look at kind of the overall trend, you know, yeah, software de defined data centers, you know, interesting marketing term, the, the long term trend here is distributed systems. And of course, uh, can, can you kind of just give us, you know, <coughs> want to understand Infinetta was founded for some of these changes in, in the WAN and distributed systems right. place. So, you know, start us with kind of the, the, some of the big themes that you guys are seeing. Give a little intro for yourself and your company. Sure. So, um, uh, Chief Product Officer at Infinetta, as you know. Um, Infinetta's claim to fame is that we are the only van uh, optimization company focusing on data center to data center links. Now, the, th the thing that's different about data center to data center links is the links are larger, right? So when we started the company some years ago, one of the things we had to think through was, how do we design a system that can sit on multiple trunks, you know, 10 gig trunks in a data center? I mean, this was pre-SDN. So the only thing that would work for us was Merchant Silicon. So without Broadcom, you know, we don't have a play. So we started a long time ago with a 56802, like you know, uh, an, an old Stratex GS, and the platform we're building right now uses a Trident Plus, and going forward, we'll use Trident 2 as well. So the thing that we look for uh, you know, uh, in, when designing a system is, how, uh, firstly, how do we take as much of the software work and, and push it to hardware? Right, just simplify it, accelerate it, push it out to hardware, so that we can focus on the work we do well, which is deduplication, TCP optimization. Uh, Broadcom makes life very easy for us. But going forward, you know, in terms of what we see, you know, two years ago, the big uh, requirement our customers had was, well, we need to, you need to support VPLS uh, in, in a large data center or, or a large uh, provider environment. So if we do that stuff in software, we have a big problem because it's going to be very slow. So we have been relying on Broadcom to help us solve those kinds of problems. And going forward, some of our larger service provider type customers are asking us for you know, NVGRE, VXLAN, in some cases SDT support. Um, there, we are also planning on relying on Broadcom to help us solve that problem. Because I mean, today we'll do it in software, but really the right place to do this is in hardware so we can scale to you know, 100 gigabits or even higher going forward. Yeah. So Greg, I'm, I'm going to come back to you because mm -hmm. uh, you know, while uh, we said 60% of applications are virtualized today and, and VMware is dominant in this place. One of the things that we've heard very clearly is um, it, it's not a homo homogenous environment. Multi-hypervisor is for real. Uh, acquisitions like Nicira, like Dynamic Ops, like Winova are all a kind of VMware thing. In many ways the hypervisor's commoditized mm -hmm. and there's going to be heterogeneous, heterogeneous environments. Um, you know, one of the things you guys have done, which was kind of news to me, is um, VXLAN, and NVGRE, uh, usually there's the standards wars and you know, we have to get one <laughs> or we have to you know, get the other. Um, can you fill us in as to you know, what you've got coming down oh, the pipe? Absolutely, and, and you know, you're right. I mean, normally there, there's multiple camps and, and we certainly see, especially in the, in the virtualization world, there isn't going to be a single player. You know, certainly VMware is an incredibly dominant player in this market today and will remain so for a long time, but you know, you look at, at uh, Zen and KVM hypervisors, uh, Microsoft with you know the advent of, of Windows Server 2012, formerly known as Windows 8. <laughs> um, you know, that's going to come on strong, and that's where uh, you know uh, NVGRE comes in. And so that the issue becomes, how do you tie together these you know these separate environments that are not going to adopt one homogeneous you know environment? even when the controllers or the, the host software supports tunneling in the native format of say NVGRE or VXLAN, what do you do once it gets into the network? And the, the only way to handle that is through gateways, to, to go ahead and handle you know, proxy and be able to, to convert you know, from one network into the other. The fortunate part is, is that NVGRE and VXLAN are, are very, very similar. You know, both have a 24-bit ID. You can think of it in, in a logical sense as really having a 24-bit VLAN that just represents uh, the tenant ID, you know, the, the VM at this point. Um, you know, one tunnels under uh, or over IP, the other uh, over UDP, but you know, the, the basic concepts are really ripe for you know, hardware to, be able to, to uh, be able to migrate that tunnel from one to the other. But again, it's that control plane, you know, our partners to be able to figure out the, that gateway strategy. The hardware has all the capability and acceleration but we really are, are, are looking forward to our partners helping us put together that rich ecosystem to be able to, to blend that environment so it doesn't matter what environment, 
even you know, some GRE type environments that, that want maybe a little bit more than NVGRE, um, you know, NYSERA and others have, have talked about you know, extending some of the capabilities that, that uh, we find in NVGRE. So, so very interesting, sounds like you know, come back a year from now, we'll really be talking about you know, being able to stitch these multiple environments a absolutely. together. Um, so, so, so Howie, coming back to you, physical networking, Virtual networking. You know, what's the balance of power these days? You know, where where are things going? You know, what should, what should you know if I'm you know not just a you know networking guy, but you know my my CIO. How do I look at the network? Well, so from big switch perspective, we sort of you know look at it from three different perspectives. Number one, just like you said, stitching things together. We don't just decouple logical network from the physical network. That's one important thing to do. But we also stitching and a bridge. Uh, the virtual and the physical switch or network together. So that's sort of one way to look at it. The other way to look at it is we stitch um, the protocols or a technology from different vendors, different hypervisors, different switches, different um, uh, VXLAN or NVGI protocols. So that's the sort of the multi-vendor heterogeneous environment. The number three thing is the openness. Openness is so important. People don't like vendor locking, right? So for us, we love open API, open standard, and then open open source stuff. So VXLAN and the NVGI being the open standard, that we love that. Okay, OpenStack Quantum? Yes, we actually have an open uh, OpenStack uh, Quantum plugin as well. Okay, um, so I see, but you know, we're, we're getting low on, uh, on the time for the panel here. Um, when you talk about scalability of environments, mm -hmm. um, you know, how, how much does the WAN play into this? So, you know, the way I think about this is, uh, you know, eight years ago, seven, eight years ago, the, when I was at a, my first round of transition company, the problem we were solving was file access. And the, the biggest problem was, you give these application guys the ability to seamlessly go and pull data from a remote location, they'll go do it. They don't think about it, they go do it, because VAN is not their problem, it's somebody else's problem. I think with SDN, the same thing is happening. And uh, now I can go get a VM or, or talk to a VM that is who knows where, it doesn't really matter, I don't care. Right? Because that is happening because of Nasera or Big Switch or whoever, um, now we're going to see more and more traffic on the van. So bread and butter for us was replication backup. These are well thought through processes, but more and more, I, I, I'm 100% sure this is what's coming. People are going to you know, just blindly start pushing a lot of traffic because they can, and that's the good part. Right? I can go do anything. I can do overlay tunnels, there's a gateway, whatever. Right? And that's going to push traffic over the van. Same as it did in, you know, for, for tens of years, I mean, at least since I've been in the industry. And that's the trend I see. Because of this uh, ability for application de developers to push traffic everywhere, they will. And because they will, you need more and more support for the van. The van needs to be stronger. The van needs to become the LAN effectively. Right? And, and, uh, and that's where we see a play for folks like us. But more importantly, I mean, you know, it's, the scales are not what they used to be. So now you got to think about Merchant Silicon, without this, it, you cannot solve it. Either you build your own ASIC, which is foolish, or use Merchant Silicon. There's no other ways to do it. And that's what we've chosen the Merchant Silicon path. All right. Good, wait, Greg. Wait, just to yeah, piggyback on that, because, uh, uh, boy, I completely agree with this. This is such an important concept, because when you, when you look at where we were several years ago, you know, we were at using vMotion, moving, you know, workloads, you know, from one server to the next within Iraq. And then it came, became, well, we can kind of do that within multiple racks. The SDN in, in the, the new virtual networking paradigm allows us to do vMotion at, at literally a global scale. So whether or not your data center is in New York, San Francisco, or potentially in Iceland you know, for, for power reasons, you can move your workloads around where you have capacity. And yep. that is going to cause yep. incredible load yep. on your, your WAN yep. environment. And the best part is, you know, even if VMware says, hey, today you cannot do vMotion across five, you know, over five sec milli milliseconds or 10 yes. milliseconds, you know what? A network guy may think about it, but an app guy? They don't care. They don't care. They, have, they don't even know what that means. All right. right? So, so, so you know, some of the long distance vMotion, really cool. You know, Howie, I want to be able to give you the, the last word here. It sounds like you have something you want to say, but also, can you speak to kind of automation and simplicity? Because, you know, as you said, kind of network as the, how do we get beyond network as the human speed? I like that, and, and, and make it, you know, work. <laughs> well, to me, there, it's sort of the three steps journey. Number one is the VMware innovated so much, make the server side so automated, so flexible. Now the networking needs to step up and then being very, a lot more flexible. But the end game is to really have a virtual networking covering both the virtual and the physical all together. You know, and then also covering not just the layer two, uh, not just the uh, um, WAN optimization, it's the entire layer two to seven needs to be flexible enough. The networking service needs to follow the workload immediately, anything, anywhere, any 
any time. That's the nirvana. I think you know, with the SDN, we will get there. That's why I'm so excited about this. Okay, so gentlemen, I apologize we're so short on time here. Uh, recommend that all of our viewers, you know, check out all of our panelists. Uh, there's definitely uh, <laughs> blogs and papers uh, that, that you can find from all these gentlemen and presentations that, they're, uh, uh, that their folks are doing here in, in demos and the like. So, uh, this is Stu Miniman with wikibon.org, and uh, we will be back with our next guest right after this brief break. Stay tuned. <laughs>